Hi there. Thought I'd make a short video today about my recent exploits with trying to find a new sleeping bag. Previously, I've been using a Rabasent 900, which is rated with a comfort rating down to minus 11 degrees C. It is a very, very warm bag. And my feet in particular tend to get very warm when I'm sleeping. And it's almost impossible to kick your feet out of a three quarter length zipped sleeping bag. The Rab 900 is okay for me up to about 10, possibly 12 degrees, at which point I'm just far, far too warm overnight. I've also got an extremely cheap OEX Fathom EV200 summer bag. It's rated from something like 11 degrees upwards. So it really is only a summer bag and it's great during the summer. But I wanted to try and find something that will do me for those shoulder seasons, the spring and the autumn, when it's well above freezing, but isn't in the low teens. After doing some research, I came across this idea of quilts, camping quilts, rather than sleeping bags. Now the quilt is in effect a sleeping bag with three sides. Usually they come with some sort of fastening system, so you can attach them round your back or around the back of the sleeping mat and use them like a pseudo sleeping bag. But they can also usually be completely unfolded, so they're just like a blanket. It can lie over the top of you and you can kick any appendage you want out from underneath it and try to regulate your temperature easily. The downside with the quilts is that they're not widely available in the UK. Most of the quilt companies seem to originate in the United States of America, so you need to import them. And consequently, they can be very expensive because of the import duties, but also the major manufacturers of American quilts seem to be making bespoke quilts made to order and of course there's a premium for those because they're not mass produced. The exception to the rule appears to be Thermarest who do make a couple of quilts that they sell in the UK, the Chorus and the Vespa, but they can be very expensive. The Vespa for instance is £275 and it's only rated for 5 degrees and upwards, which might be adequate but it's a lot of money for a relatively warm weather sleeping system. So when I started looking at these American quilts, I decided to do a little bit of pseudo science. And what I did, I started to look at the insulation, the filling that you get within sleeping bags and quilts, looking at whether it's duck down or goose down, uh, the ratio between the down to the feather, down's much warmer, feather just fills up space, the fill weight, i.e. the amount of down, which is within the, uh, the insulation layer, and the fill power, which is a measure of the bulking of the down that you put in there. So high fill power is good, high fill weight is good, but it's heavier. So the ideal is you end up with goose down with a very high fill power, maybe 900 or 950 fill power, and a relatively low fill weight of maybe 500 grams. That will give you a lightweight, but very warm sleeping system. So using my pseudo science, I developed a calculation that took into account the type of down, the quantity of down, and the quality of down. And then I divided that into the area of the quilt or the bag, which gave me a number which indicated the amount of insulation you get over each section of the bag. And the Rabasent 900 really seems to deviate from the line of best fit through all the other bags. Rab's published comfort rating is minus 11 degrees C, but I think if you draw the line through all of the bags that I did the calculation for, the Rabasent 900 should be more like minus three to minus five degrees C. From all these calculations, I came to the conclusion that an American quilt maker called Featherstone would be the optimal one for me. They produce a quilt called the Featherstone Moondance 25, which their comfort rating is given at plus two degrees C, which I thought was gonna be ideal to complement the cold weather ability of my Rab 900 and the warm weather ability of my Fathom 200. When I did the calculations on the Featherstone quilt, I actually think that it's rated conservatively. 
and that perhaps the rating should be closer to zero degrees C rather than plus two. But because you can kick your feet and bits of your body out from underneath it, it doesn't really matter if it's warmer than you think it is. So I imported it from the United States and good old Featherstone Outdoors, they put a $10 value on the customs declaration so I didn't get any import duties. So included carriage from the United States of America, which only took six days from the moment I ordered it, and I ordered it on a Sunday, um, it cost me £154, which is vastly less than any of the other quilts or sleeping bags I was looking at in this sort of temperature range. What was also worth noting with the carriage from the United States is Featherstone are based over on the west coast of America. I think it's in Philadelphia. The quilt got from the west coast, flew across to the east coast of America, then flew across to Stansted Airport within 48 hours of me ordering it. It then took another four days to get from Stansted Airport the 50 miles or so down to where I am in Kent. What I thought I'd do now that I've got the Featherstone here is actually try and do some more pseudoscience and do a little bit of a test on the insulation quality that you get from it. So the four bags that I decided to use are my really old Mountain Life Summit 300 extra large bag. That's rated down to minus two degrees C. I've also got my Rabascent 900 which as I said is rated down to minus 11, but I reckon it's more like minus three to minus five. I've got the Featherstone Moondance 25 quilt, rated at two degrees C, and I've got my OEX Fathom EV200, which is rated at around plus seven degrees C, although I think that's a bit chilly for that bag. What I did was I laid out each of the bags on the floor of my conservatory, where it was a chilly, 15 degrees C and in each of the bags I put one litre of 55 degree water inside a Nalgene bottle and I left them in the bags and I took the temperature after one hour and again after two hours and I also had a blank just sitting out on the table. Now that blank that was sitting on the table drop from 55 to 20 degrees C. So that's a 35 degrees C drop over two hours. Mountain Life Summit 300 XL dropped by 16 degrees C. The Rabascent 900 dropped by 17 degrees C. The Featherstone Moon Dance 25 dropped by just 15 degrees C. And the OEX Fathom EV200 dropped by 22 degrees C. So you can actually see that the Mountain Life, the Rab and the Featherstone were all very similarly performing bags, even though the Rab was apparently rated about 10 degrees lower than the other two. Again, that backs up my pseudoscience calculation that the Rab actually isn't as good as Rab make out. Now, two of the bags that I've got, the Summit 300 XL and the Fathom EV200 are synthetic and the other two bags, the Rab 900 and the Featherstone, are both down bags. And when you pack them up, there's such a huge difference, which a lot of people don't tend to talk about. With a synthetic bag, you have to carefully fold and roll it, and you end up getting cramp in your hands as you try to force this huge slippery beast back into its stuff sack. And this is the same for both of those two synthetic bags. The down bags, on the other hand, are not quite a pleasure, but in comparison, they're a pleasure to put into their stuff sacks because you don't have to fold them, you don't have to roll them. You just start at one end and you stuff them into the stuff sack. And before you know it, it's all in the stuff sack and you do the stuff sack up. You also find that with the synthetic bags, once they're in their stuff sacks, they are completely unyielding hard cylinders. Whereas the down products in their stuff sacks are still quite soft and malleable and you can force them into the corners of the nooks and crannies of your bag far, far more easily. Now I thought I'd calculate out the volumes of the four bags when they're in their stuff sacks. So 
the Mountain Life Summit 300XL synthetic bag, uh, three season rating down to minus two. That's 17 litres of volume once, you, once it's packed away and it weighs 2.175 kilograms. It's a bit of a big beast. The similarly performing Ravascent 900 is a down bag. That packs down to 16.7 litres. So not that much less, but it's far softer and more squidgy. I reckon you could take another litre or so off of that if you pushed it down harder. But it does only weigh 1.65 kilos, including its stuff sack. So that's a significant weight saving for that bag. The Featherstone Moon Dance 25 Quilt, which I'm getting more and more impressed with. It's a similarly rated sleep system as the other two, but it comes in at a paltry 7.7 .7 litres. That's well under half the volume of the other two bags. And with its stuff sack, it comes in at 915 grams, which again is a long way under a half, getting on for a third of the weight of the other bags for something that performs very similarly, both in the calculated ratings and my pseudoscience test using one litre of water in an algae bottle. The OEX Fathom, um, that doesn't weigh very much at all. That's 865 grams, but it doesn't have a lot of substance to it, which is why it's rated at plus seven degrees C and it only occupies 5.9 litres. So it's by far the lightest and the least voluminous bag, but also it's only really of any use when the temperature's up in the teens. The Featherstone Moon Dance 25 quilt that I bought is the wide, long version. It's 229 centimetres long by 147 centimetres wide. So it is a big beast. It's made with box baffles that mean it isn't sewn through, which in theory improves the insulation value of it because you always have more insulation over the top of you. There aren't any thin points where sewing goes through. The outside of the Moondance 25 is made of 10 denier water repellent coated material and it's black and the inside as you can see is bright orange and is another 10 denier material. Insulation wise the Featherstone Moondance 25 is filled with 533 grams of an 850 fill power 9010 grey duck down. The down is down tech and usually these the down comes as a byproduct of the Asian food industry anyhow. Um, the down is treated with a PFC free, i.e. an environmentally friendly water repellency treatment. And as I mentioned, the 10 denier outer fabric is also treated with a DWR coating, which is PFC free. At the back, you have these clips on it, which you can either attach around you or it comes with a set of straps that go underneath your sleeping pad and then one of these goes to each side of your sleeping pad. It also has a quarter zip, YKK zip at the bottom with a draw cord base. So you can either cinch it up and make a foot box for your feet inside it or you can open it completely up, unzip it and use it like a blanket so your feet aren't trapped inside of anything. Your choice. One thing that quilts do not have is any hood. So where your head goes in a normal sleeping bag inside a hood, which is ideal when the weather's really cold and you want to keep yourself warm, with these you need to wear a hat and have a decent pillow. What there is though is a neck baffle and an elasticated drawer cord inside that allows you to cinch up the neck around your shoulders and around your neck to try and keep you as warm as you can. But you have of course still got this big opening. But normally, with it up the other way, that's where your sleeping pad would be. And if you use the included straps, then the sides of the sleeping quilt will go around underneath the sides of your sleeping mat. One irritation of the Featherstone stuff sack which is the same very light 10 denier material, 
is it doesn't have a grab handle on the end of it like most sleeping bags do. So when you're trying to extricate it from the stuff sack, you tend to hold on to the quilt as well and you can't actually get it out very easily. Wish it did have a handle on the end. I may sew one across or I may not bother. So in terms of cost, size, weight and performance, I think the Featherstone Moon Dance 25 appears to give really exceptional value. It's quite lightweight, it's quite small, it's not very expensive and seems to be very good in terms of its performance and its temperature rating. We have to wait and see until I actually go out somewhere in it, but at the moment I think it's a big thumbs up from me for this quilt. So there you have it, that's the end of the video really. Just wanted to take you through these four sleeping bags that I've got. Um, no real comments about the quality of my night's sleep in the Featherstone because I haven't used it yet. So this was just really an introduction to it. So I um, hope somebody may have found this useful. Uh, the takeaways from it that I've got are, don't always believe the manufacturer's ratings, do your own research and if possible talk to people who have actually used the products. Um, always go with down. Down is lighter, packs better and is warmer. Unless you're going to get it wet. Don't get the down wet though. Um, and with that, have a good day. Bye bye.